All right, folks, so today we are going to continue with 11.4. Um, we are going to learn three different apportionment methods um, using that new way of calculating like we did with the Hamilton method uh, last week. Um, now, these again are uh, founding fathers or people who are running our early government uh, coming up with these apportionment methods. And oddly enough, they are extremely similar to each other. Um, so you need, really need to pay attention to um, what they do or how, how you handle them. Um, but the first thing we need to talk about is something called a modified quota. Okay, and really a modified quota is um, where you take the standard quota like we talked about last week. Uh, please refer back to the notes on that if you don't remember what that is. But you take the standard quota and then you adjust it according to what we need. Okay, and these three different methods are going to need something slightly different. And so you, the modified quota is just taking the standard quota and then adjusting that. And you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. So our first method we're going to talk about is from our wonderful founding father, Thomas Jefferson. So Jefferson's uh, apportionment method um, basically is to use trial and error to find a modified divisor. Um, this is uh, smaller than the standard divisor for the apportionment. And I realize now, I'm sorry, I misquoted before. The modified quota is in the final result. We're modifying the divisor, what we're dividing by, from that standard divisor. So I do apologize if I just confused everybody right there. Um, but so we're modifying what we're dividing by to get the final result that we want, which is then called that modified quota. All right, so then we assign that number of representatives for each state. Um, the key thing for Jefferson, and I know I'm kind of going a little fast now, but the key thing for Jefferson, thing to remember, is that your quotas at the end, you are going to take those and you are going to round it down. Okay? Jefferson rounds down. So what the heck do I mean? That's a big thing to remember is Jefferson rounds down. Let's look at an example. So here's our same example we've been dealing with before. We've seen this many times. Um, but we now have that uh, we're still giving out those nine members. We're giving out those nine members. And we want to apportion them to our three companies. Again, we have seen this before. So, but this time we want to use Jefferson's method. So again, please pay close attention to how we're doing Jefferson's method. So we first find our standard divisor, and that is exactly the same as what we did last week with uh, Hamilton's method, is you're taking that total population of all the states together and dividing by the total number of um, representatives to be apportioned. And that gives us that 1,111.11 uh, for our standard divisor. All right, so now we want to go through and we want to take each uh, state, well in this case it's a company, but each state's population divided by that standard divisor. Okay, and so when we do that, when we do that, we get these numbers. All right, again, where is that coming from? That is coming from, for that case of Naxon, I'm taking 4,700 and dividing it by 1,111.11. All right, so what we do with that then is after we have calculated that for all the companies, we then round that number down. That's Jefferson's method, is you round down. And so that means this gets four, this gets three, this gets one. And if I add those up, I end up with eight total apportionments. Um, total representatives. We're supposed to apportion nine of them. So um, what we need to do then is adjust this, okay? And something you want to remember is if your um, quota is too low, then, or I should probably say if the quota is small,
then make your modified divisor smaller. Okay, so we're making that divisor smaller. And so, um, and, and that's just one of those things that just, it kind of works. And we can talk about this more when I'm back. But, um, so we've changed that divisor from 1,111.11, we've made it smaller to 1,050. And this is where it's a guess, folks. You are literally just guessing this, okay? And so our quota was too small, and so we found a smaller divisor. Um, and then when we do that, we get these numbers, which again, round down to the same numbers we had before. So that didn't help us. We need to try again. And so in trying it again, um, again, they're still showing the original solutions we had gotten with our standard quota, but the modified quota, now they have a new modified divisor, this time rather than the 1,111, we have 935. And we do that across, and again, rounding everything down now gives us five, three, because again, round it down, and one. Well, 5, 3, and 1 does give us a total of 9. And so then that is how we would apportion this. So again, this is a guess. Okay. Our total apportionment originally was too small. And so we made our divisor smaller. That then helped us get things to work out. Next, we have Adams' method. Adams' method is just like Jefferson's method, except rather than rounding down, Adams rounds up. Now, it is uh, uh, kind of humorous that uh, John Quincy Adams and Thomas Jefferson did not get along, and so their apportionment methods are very similar and just a slight difference. I mean, founding fathers fighting over math. I love it. All right, but here we go. Adams. Adams. One way to help you remember all of these things is Adams, the A looks like an arrow because Adams rounds up. Okay. All right, the A looks like an arrow, so the Adams rounds up. And But again, we do the same thing. So let's walk through it. We have our same um, uh, three companies. And so we're going to take that exact same um, total population divided by our nine members we're going to apportion. Gives us that same familiar 1111111.11 whatever number that we have, 1111.11. And that is our standard divisor. We now come in here and find our standard quota. And just walking you through it again, making sure everybody understands, this number, that standard quota, comes from taking that company's population divided by the standard divisor. Okay? But when we do that, and this time we are supposed to be rounding up, we get four, oops, excuse me, rounding up, we get five, we get four, we get two. Now again, we are apportioning nine members to this board. And right there, we have just apportioned 11. Well, we can't have that. That's too big. Okay. And so since that's too big, just like before, um, the same thing goes. If the quota is big, then make the divisor bigger. Okay, so if the quota is too big, then make the divisor bigger. And so what we're doing then is rather than one, uh, 1,111, let's make it 1,200. All right, so now we get uh, 3.9, which rounds to four. We get 3.08, which rounds to four we get 1.33, which rounds to 2. And again, remember, we rounding, we're rounding all of those up because it's Adam's method. 
and again we get a quota that is too large so we have to try again and since the quota was too large we need to make our divisor bigger and so rather than 1200 this time we are using 1250 and doing the exact same process with 1250 we now get 3.76 which rounds up to 4 2.96 which rounds up to 3 and 1.28 which rounds up to 2 and that then gives us the proper number 9 that we need for our representatives. All right, next comes Webster's method. And yes, it is the dictionary people. So Webster, um, again, we're doing everything the exact same way, the exact same way, way back from the Hamilton method we learned last week. We're doing those same standard divisor calculations, finding the standard quota and all that good stuff. But now, remember, Jefferson wanted us to round down, Adams wanted us to round up, and Webster, starts with a W and the best way I can remember to do this one is that this part of the W looks like an arrow pointing up whereas these parts of the W are arrows pointing down well what the heck does that mean well that means that we use standard rounding standard rounding that we have learned since grade school, okay? So if a decimal is five or larger, it rounds up. If a decimal is less than five, it rounds down to the uh, whole number, okay? So um, again, we're using trial and error, modifying that uh, divisor to get the modified quota we want. Let's take a look. Same situation, same nine member board, same company. And when we go and do the um, general standard uh, divisor or standard quota, all right, we get the 4.23, uh, we get the 3.33, we get the 1.4. And so they haven't changed anything here, okay? That's just the same thing we've been doing. But now when we round, 0.23 wants to round down, and so we get 4. Uh, 0.33 wants to round down, so we get 3. 0.44 get, wants to round down, so we get 1. And adding those up, we get 8. Well, again, same thing as before. 8 is too small. That means we want to make our divisor smaller. So rather than 1111, we're now using 1060. And we again do the same calculation. So population divided by our modified divisor gives us 4.43, which rounds down to 4. We have 3.49, which rounds down to 3. We have 1.51, which rounds up to 2. So that little bit of a change there then gives us our nine member board. So a few things that I want you to remember. So first off, remember if the quota is small, and what I mean by that is it's smaller than the total number of representatives you're trying to apportion, and it's that total quota is small, then make your divisor small. Um, if your total quota is too big, then make your divisor bigger. Okay, and in all of these met methods, I really want you guys to make sure to round all answers.
to three decimal places. Um, I know the examples I showed here only rounded it to two decimal places, but I do believe there are at least one, um, there's at least one problem here that you need it rounded to three decimal places to get an appropriate answer. Um, and again, if you're finding everything is just too close and it's not working out for you, try rounding it out to four decimal places. Um, don't go crazy with that. Don't go out to five or six, but um, you shouldn't have to go much farther than three, I don't believe. But uh, showing those decimal places will definitely help you uh, find your correct answer. Okay, so why do they have these different methods even though they are very similar? Again, we have four different methods. We have Hamilton's method, Jefferson's method, Adam's method, and Webster's method. Um, it's because of the paradoxes, okay? Um, because of the paradoxes. And so, we know then that um, we have the Alabama paradox we've talked about, the population paradox, the new states paradox, and don't forget that quota rule. And the quota rule was, again, that a state should only get apportioned enough representatives to where they fall between either the upper or lower quota. Um, and so, looking at this, the Hamilton method actually uh, can have all of these paradoxes, but it does happily um, pass the quota rule, okay? And so, uh, again, all of these is talking about that it, it violates these things. So when it says yes, it means it can have the Alabama paradox. So Jefferson actually goes through and doesn't have any of the paradoxes. In fact, all of these methods, Jefferson, Adams, and Webster, none of them get the paradoxes we've talked about. And all of them can violate the quota rule. And so there's kind of the issue and why these things have been debated so long is that um, we have these paradoxes, which are kind of fairness criteria in this quota rule, again, kind of fairness criteria, that some methods can do certain things, some methods don't. They all kind of have their flaws. And I do find it, you know, kind of silly that our two of our uh, former presidents fighting over math and very similar methods giving you very similar results in the end.